Well, we're approaching Halloween, it's, uh, and it's that time of year when we have to think about spooky things. And Brady, you've set us the challenge in physics of coming up with something uh, physically that uh, can represent Halloween. Not easy, but in the world of particle physics, which is a, a rather unusual world, uh, we have ghost particles. What are ghost particles? They're bad things, right? They're really bad things. They, they can be good and they can be bad. The difference between the good ones and the bad ones is that the, the good ones don't exist as real particles. They're just virtual particles, so you can't just grab one, whereas the bad ones do. And uh, some of them make a theory consistent, and others completely destabilise a the theory. And so the good ones make the theory consistent, and if you have the bad ones, then the theory becomes inconsistent and uh, usually is thrown out. Let's talk about the good ones first. In particle physics, we deal with very small things. We're, we're interested in interactions. And so we might have a, a group of particles initially which interact to give me a group of particles at the end, and they don't have to be the same. But what we're interested in is a way of describing that interaction to go from this initial state to the final state. And there are a number of approaches to that. And one of the most famous that's been developed initially by Dirac, but then really pushed forward by uh, Feynman, was called the path integral formalism. So we have various ways of doing it. There might be one path that will take me this way, but per perhaps it's not unique. Maybe there's another way of getting to that state, and it goes up here and comes down. Maybe it goes down here and comes up. And in fact, there's an infinite number of ways of doing this. And what Feynman said was, if you want to work out the actual amplitude or the probability of starting here and ending here, you can't just take what is called the classical path, the path that we're used to from classical mechanics like Newton told us. You have to include all of these other weird and wonderful trajectories. Now, we want to use the path integral to describe real physics. We want to be able to use it to describe the interactions, the forces that we're used to, electromagnetism. We want to understand the weak force, you know, why is the sun burning? We want to understand the strong force, why are why is the nucleus of the atom bound together? Why don't the protons blow themselves apart? Why are they bound together? Why are quarks bound together? This requires us to understand an area of particle physics called gauge theories. Uh, well, what the good ones do is they, they eat up uh, other things that are unphysical. So in, in physics, you have um, theories which have lots of symmetry. So you can, you know, one th lots of things look the same. So there's lots of sort of redundant ingredients. And what the, uh, the good ghosts come along and do is they, they eat them up, essentially. But they don't exist as real particles, so they don't actually screw with the, uh, with the real world. They just, they just help us to quantize certain types of theory, gauge theories. You introduce the ghost particles and they cancel off all the extra ones, leaving you with just the physical ones left. And so it's a way of regularizing your theory and making it self-consistent. So these are the good particles. Yeah, I guess they're really, in, in this case, they really are just a mathematical trick. Because as I say, you've got, you've got these theories, which have these symmetries, these redundancies of, of information. And you've got to, when you actually quantize the theory, you've got to remove those redundancies. And you use this mathematical trick of introducing this ghost particle that comes along, sees the, the extra degrees of freedom, the extra redundant bits, and eats them. And then they're gone. So you're just left with what's physical. Are ghost particles real things? No. But if ghost particles do something, they make something work, then surely they must exist. So the, the ghost particles that, that are needed for the consistency of this model are virtual particles. They, they, will, they take part in an interaction, but you'll ne you're never able to actually pin them down. So they're never part of the final state. If, if you say, what does an experiment measure? An experiment measures an initial state, and some final state, and then things happen in between. The ghost particles pop up and disappear again in that inter intervening period. They're definitely there in the sense of their virtual particles that pop up and disappear again, but they're not there in the sense of you detecting them. So are they actually particles? Why do you give them the name particle? Because they have properties that are similar to particles. You, you can associate various numbers with them. You can associate a, a momentum with them. You can associate a mass with them. If it turns out these um, uh, gauge fields that we were describing acquire a mass, which they do in, the, in what's known as the Higgs symmetry breaking phase transition, where all particles acquire mass, these particles will also acquire a mass. They have many properties of, of, of conventional particles. 
It's just that you, they're, they're the virtual ones that uh, uh, link you from your initial state to your final state. That sounds really wishy-washy to me. That sounds like something humans have made up to cover for something they don't understand. No, no, not at all. It's not wishy-washy. Remember, what, what the ghost particles are there to, to, ex to help d uh, make this path integral approach um, consistent. But maybe the path integral approach is wrong. Oh, make stuff up to make huge, work. huge questions about the path integral approach. Indeed, uh, for, for, for mathematicians, uh, it's not a very well-defined concept. Uh, uh, for various reasons, it's, it's not that well-defined. Physically, it's brilliant. It works amazingly well. It produces fantastic... Uh, accuracy in terms of comparing theoretical predictions of quantum electrodynamics, um, electroweak theory, comparing it with observations. Oh, the bad case, well, they really are bad. So th these are bad. So the crucial difference between these and the other ones is that, is that they basically, that, that they can exist as real particles. And what's so bad about them is if you want them to be quantum mechanically consistent, then they have to carry negative kinetic energy and that's really bad. So what that means is, is essentially, you know, if you and I were to, were to run along on the football field, as, as, we, as we have in the past there, Brady, um, you know, we, the faster we run, the more kinetic energy we, we, we have. If a ghost particle was doing that, he would have more negative kinetic energy. The faster he ran, the more negative his kinetic energy would become. At school, we're taught that the energy is usually made up of the kinetic energy, that's the energy of movement, plus the potential energy. And you always think of these as positive. So if you just take this, this little blob of space here, right, right in front of me, then you could produce, on the one hand, you could produce a, an ordinary particle, like an apple, and that's carrying negative, you know, that's moving around, that's carrying positive energy. But at the same time, you could produce a ghost. So you produce the apple and the ghost. The apple carries positive kinetic energy. The ghost carries neg negative kinetic energy. And the two together cancel each other out. Right? So you could actually produce these without any cost in energy. These fluctuations, these ghost-like particles, and they're called ghosts because of the negative kinetic energy, these ghost-like particles can be coupled to other particles and you'd, at, no, at no cost you just keep producing ghost particles in these extra particles. You just bombard the universe with these extra particles. So there's nothing to stop that happening. And actually what happens is these will constantly get produced in these two pairs. Okay, you produce the apples and the ghosts, the apples and the ghosts, and it'll happen everywhere. And eventually the room will be rapidly filled up with well, positive energy apples and negative energy ghosts. And you completely have an, an unstable situation. And that is, that's an instability in the theory. That solution you've got is clearly an unstable one. It doesn't want to stay there. And so people tend to use this criteria, this existence of this ghost particle in this second version as, a, as an instability in the theory and you discard the theory. So yeah, it, it, your theory might predict their existence, if it does it's a bad prediction, you know, it's not a prediction you, you want for your theory.